La Réunion, a tropical paradise in the Indian Ocean. Cyril Maillot delivers the mail here. Oh, my bag is packed. He travels by foot to places that cars can't get to in the mountainous area of Mafat. This is my own personal yoga. Mountains located on an island 9,000 kilometers from Europe and yet still part of France and so part of the European Union too. Cyril Maillot, an island mail carrier and for the residents here, so much more. Before Cyril sets off for the mountains, someone brings him the mail he'll deliver. But not just anyone. It's his father, Yulong. Cyril, the letters are in the car. Come and get them. In the past, Yulong Mayo delivered the mail into the mountains himself sometimes. Ten years ago, his son took over. I taught him everything. <laughs> Today, he's one of the bosses of the post office in the valley. It's me who decides whether he should still make the trip when it's raining. Then I phone someone up there to check that he's arrived safely. There's a river where the water rises quickly when it rains. It's dangerous. He's my son, so I want to play it safe. He was nine when he joined my mail round for the first time. Accompanying my father was a big part of my childhood. Back then, the mail carrier was often the only contact with the outside world. We brought the residents their money from the bank here in the valley or deposited it here for them afterwards. And if someone had to fill out a document, we did it for them. Often we read out letters because hardly anyone up there could read. Today it's different. The children are now grown up and have learned to read and write in the valley. After his father's gone, Cyril gets ready to leave. It looks like rain. There's nothing like a plastic rubbish bag to protect the letters from the rain. The first stretch is an hour's drive by car. Then the road ends and he sets off on foot for his weekly round. It's a bit damp today, but it could be worse. Sometimes when it rains really hard, water just accumulates everywhere. It's slippery and you're marching through mud. This is the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus and of us all. She watches over us passers-by on these mountain trails. We all fear nature. We have a healthy respect for what nature can do. Sometimes, when the forces of nature are unleashed, I decide not to head out. Where are we going now? Over there, a pilot crashed in a small helicopter. Sometimes local residents rent a helicopter to bring up food from the valley. That was in 2010. The pilot had a child on board. Both were killed. It can be dangerous here especially in a helicopter, even more so when it's foggy like now. The mountains are like that. Today, Cyril walks for about three hours along damp mountain paths.
It's quite an effort to drop letters into just half a dozen mailboxes. The village of Marla has only about 30 or so houses. You see, there's no name on the letterboxes. You have to know everyone here and where they live. In the city, there are nameplates and house numbers. Up here, you have to know the names of the residents, their children and spouses. Like every Monday, Cyril spends the night in the hostel that Paulina Oaro has been running for 30 years. The rain is good too. Yes, the plants need it. I heard a granddaughter was born today. Yes, Christine's daughter. At the hospital in Saint-Pierre. She works down there and has a small apartment. Your family's growing. <laughs> How many grandchildren do you have now? I have ten grandchildren. And six great-grandchildren now. How do you see Cyril? Is he just your mail carrier? <laughs> He's more than that for me. He comes every week and is part of the family. He's like a son. <laughs> Paulina Waro is the fifth generation of her family in Mafat. The area was settled in the 19th century. <laughs> My ancestors took refuge here when they escaped slavery. The people fled from the coast and hid in the mountains. They lived from what they were able to grow. The next day, Cyril has about four hours of walking ahead of him. But he enjoys it too. You can switch off completely and escape from city life. First, Cyril stops at individual houses, like the home of longtime resident Claude Klein. Hello, everything okay? Yes. The rain hasn't been too much? It's a bit much. Did you bring him mail? No, not today. So why are you here? I just want to say hello. Quite a nice mail carrier. Yes. Claude only rarely gets visitors here. Do you live alone here? Yes, just me and my chickens. At his age, looking after chickens is fine, but other animals would be too much. The locals love the quiet way of life in Mafat. It's a far cry from the noise of the cities on this island of 900,000. Younger people tend to move away from quiet Mafat to the coast or broad. But some do return to the mountains. People here grow much of their own food and get electricity from solar panels or power generators. La Nouvelle is the largest of Mafat's nine villages. It's home to 150 of the 700 residents of this mountain basin. There have been a few houses built here in the past 10 years, at least eight. Mafat is in a national park that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Residents pay an annual fee of a few hundred euros to the French National Forest Office. The agency maintains the trails and takes care of the trash, which is picked up once a month by helicopter. 
As tourism increases, it's becoming more of a problem, says Silvano Libel. People come from all over and just leave their garbage lying around. They should pick it up. Otherwise, we'll drown in garbage one day. But tourism is also a blessing for Mafat, which used to be cut off from the outside world. Sylvain Baig, the village's oldest resident, remembers it well. Life was hard. Many people had nothing to eat and planted corn. We lived on roots. Change came in the early 1980s, in good part due to Sylvain Beg. I carried wood and sheets of corrugated metal on my head from a village 10 kilometers away and opened the first hostel and restaurant. After that, I opened other hostels. Without tourists, we would still be living in misery. Cyril is done with his deliveries. He'll now stamp the mail he'll take back to the post office using a stamp made especially for Mafat. His job as a mail carrier means a lot to him. I like the people here. After all, I'm here to help them. They're friends. If I stopped doing this job, it would leave a real hole in my life. It's a good life, says Cyril Maillot, the mail carrier of Mafat. Bye, Maurice. See you next week. Bye.